Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Larry O'Farrell. I'm the uh, chair of the board of the Canadian Network for Arts and Learning. And we have another uh, a group of people here um, who I should introduce as being part of our group. Uh, Marnie is there, um, is a board member from Saskatchewan. And um, I, uh, uh, Jennifer uh, uh, Petrelli is there. She's our um, chair. Uh, Director of, uh, of, of uh, Management, uh, Managing Director. Um, I see Caitlin Bois there, Caitlin. And Caitlin is uh, the one actually who knows how to make the technology work. She's our map builder and technological whiz. And I, I see Nisa Sills is there. Nisa is a researcher. She's going to, so our conversation will be recorded. And Nisa is going to Listen back to everything and make a report uh, when we're when we've had our um, our series of uh, of these uh, they're not webinars they're really roundtable discussions um, and um, so so that we'll have a concrete record of of what people have been saying and we will use that as part of uh, um, um, advocacy with um, with government and and so on so we're, we'll. We'll, we'll keep that in mind. I see lots of people here who don't have their, um, do not have their, their cameras on, which is just fine. Um, I'm just going to say a, a word of, well, this is your word of welcome. I hope you're feeling welcome. Um, and, uh, and perhaps not so isolated for, for an hour here today as we, we meet um, uh, uh, virtually. Um, I want to just say, uh, to make sure you, you know who we are, where there's the Canadian Network for Arts and Learning. And our, our mission is really to find ways of bringing people in the field of arts and learning together uh, for sharing best practices and research and, um, and uh, an advocacy. So we're a, we're, um, a charitable foundation uh, registered with the government of, of Canada and um, and we are working right now, just very, very coincidentally, I guess, on um, uh, a grant from the Canada Council for the Arts, which has to do with um, uh, digital strategy. So how are we going to help the field work, uh, or in what ways would be good for, for the field to work through, through digital technology? And uh, well, here we are only able to meet through digital technology. So perhaps that's rather, um, timely that we're and and, and through this uh, thanks to the Canada Council grant we're able to to run the series of of um, digital meetings so I really welcome you and and most of uh, the rest of the time will be spent by you talking not me uh, but I, but uh, Jennifer now is going to take over because she's going to make sure we all know how to work the technology and um, and she's actually going to Sort of guide us through um, everyone con contributing. Thank you, Larry. Uh, likely many of you have used Zoom before, but maybe not. So um, just to start off, uh, if you would like to take part in the discussion, please do enable your video and, and then we'll be able to kind of go around the room and make sure you're included in all of that. If you're unable to enable your video or you just don't want to be on video, uh, just you can either raise your hand or you can um, you can message me directly and I, I will um, then call on you to speak and you can speak without video. That's totally fine. And if you just want to listen in, that's okay too. Um, so um, yes, at the bottom of your screen, you can see there's a participants at the bottom there. And so if you bring up that menu, it should show up on your right hand side. And uh, that is where you can raise your hand uh, virtually um, so that as we go through and uh, you want to speak, we make sure everybody gets a chance to talk who wants to say something. Also, uh, you can enable your chat if you haven't already. Um, and for chat, we've had some uh, so far with our other conversations, people have been posting links to uh, things they've been talking about or um, just making comments if they're not, uh, if they don't want to jump in on what somebody else is saying. And also you can uh, message somebody directly. So if you want to ask for somebody's um, contact information, you can message them directly on the chat um, or just give them a direct message. 
Also, throughout the call, I will be posting a couple of polls, and this is so that uh, we can get some quantitative data for our um, for our reports and our letters that we're going to be writing uh, later on. And uh, just to let you know, these these polls are completely confidential. I have no way of knowing who's put what on there. So please uh, feel free to uh, to participate in those polls as well. Um, so now to to get started, I guess we'll just go around the room and um, and I will uh, I'll kind of call on call on you if you've got your video enabled or let me know if you want to speak. And I'll just say if you could say your name, your title, the organization that you work with, if that's applicable, uh, and kind of one sentence about uh, the immediate effects of of what this the um, self isolation social distancing has had on you at this point. Uh, so to start off, we'll we'll start with Laureen. I'm Laureen Kells, and I am currently the president of the Canadian Federation of Music Teachers. We represent 10 provinces and one territory and approximately 3,200 private music teachers across Canada. Our concern at, uh, as membership is um, we're, we're a small business, basically independent business people. We've, there's a lot of concern that we're falling through the cracks when it comes to government help and things like that. Uh, we're looking for ways just to just to bring that forward and uh, and help our members with, with that's the big challenge. We're all figuring out our online lessons and I think we're doing really well with that. But um, finances is a big thing probably for our members right now. Right, right. Thank you. Um, Amber Anderson. Hi, I'm Amber Anderson and I'm the Director Curator at the Esteban Art Gallery and Museum in Esteban, Saskatchewan. And I would say our biggest uh, right now is just the cancellation of almost all programming and kind of not knowing what the future holds because we had some major fundraisers that were um, in summer. We had a major festival that's already been cancelled. So what does that look like for us in terms of finances? especially we were already in a down economy before this. So this is a really edgy time for us. Right, yeah, thank you, Amber. Uh, Sarah. <clears throat> Hi, I'm uh, one of the many teachers that Lorene represents. And so I have pretty much, <laughs> this, <laughs> pretty much the same questions as she does. Hi, Lorene. Okay. Hi. <laughs> um, Jackie. Hello, sorry, I was on mute. Um, my name is Jackie Latondras. I'm the artistic director for Free Flow Dance Theatre Company based in Saskatoon. This is our 25th anniversary year and our season was slated to begin on March 1st. So um, it's we didn't really get a chance to get started this year. Um, However, we did have our major fundraiser planned for March, uh, which raises probably about, I would say a third of our fundraising for the year. Um, so that event has been canceled. Um, and again, all the programming is suspended. Because we work in dance, we work in groups and, and we rely greatly on um, large gatherings. So, Everything for us is on hold. We're looking at some online platforms for our community workshop program and other things like that. Um, yeah, that's our concerns right now. Great. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Um, Marilyn. Hi, I am a registered music teacher, I teach private piano. Um, I'm involved with band, choir, church choir. We're trying to figure out how to do trumpet duets. So just basically what everybody, I'm teaching online. And so I've used WhatsApp, Zoom, FaceTime, depending on what the student can handle, WebEx and Zoom. So we're, I'm just here to learn. Thank you. Thanks, Marilyn. Sounds like we can learn from you as well. Sounds good. Um, Caitlin Seibold. Hello, I'm Claire Seibold. Claire. Just, I'm, well, I'm using my daughter's laptop. I am like Lorene and the others. I am a private music teacher in Rosetown, Saskatchewan. And of course, with everything um, shutting down, I've, this is my second week of online lessons, but I'm just here to learn as well. So I'm just listening in. Thank you. Okay, sorry. I didn't, yes, my, my bad. Um, let's see, Keith. Keith. 
me. I'm trying to mute myself. There, we're both, I think. There, uh, Keith Bartlett, yeah, I'm a musician. I have my own music studio in North Balford. Uh, and uh, I have my music studio at home here in Cut Knife, where I live, and I'm living here now. So I've been using, vi I've been using also uh, distance uh, video uh, lessons for a few years for my students from, you know, Skype, FaceTime, WhatsApp, and so on. But uh, I started using Zoom as soon as it was available. So uh, interestingly, I started putting more and more of my students on Zoom even uh, because I, they come from uh, the ones mm -hmm. that, when I teach music, like I'm not doing any performing these days. So when I teach music, I uh, a lot of them come for distance to North Balfour. So I started getting them on on video. I live out of town. So since then, my music studio like is just closed in North Balfour, and uh, I've been able to continue all my students on Zoom. Um, actually, I had mo I, most of them were up on running on Zoom. I had been familiarizing them with it before this crisis. So really, I've been able to carry on. In fact, I have to cut away at two o'clock for my next student. But I think the only thing I'll have to offer is that, that uh, to anybody is that I've decided to go with the pro version of Zoom for like, they have a Canadian special on now, 200 bucks. So it's like 15 a month. But the reason is that I can have up to 100 participants like this, unlimited time. And also I can use the online video hosting. So when I record snippets of what I want my students to, uh, uh, take part in, and then I just hit the record button, I can pause it. And so on. for those of you who haven't used it, it's really great because that way they host it. It doesn't fill up on your laptop. You don't have trouble emailing it to them because the videos are always too large. They convert to MP4, but they still add up. But little, you could just do little burst recordings and then when they get the file later, they can either download it or it's just there. They can watch it online. So I think for me, that's worth the, to paying for the pro version. And um, that's maybe all I'll say right now. That's probably more than you needed to me to say. That's great. Thank you, Keith. Uh, Catherine Ricketts. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for doing this. Um, I am uh, working as a faculty member in the University of Regina in arts ed, and my discipline is dance. Um, and then I'm also the past president of the Saskatchewan Arts Alliance. So uh, there's two separate ways that I'm dealing with this. Uh, I'm the director of the Center for Teaching and Learning at the university, so I'm helping faculty move from face to face to remote and, um, and all of the, the, not just the technical, but the pedagogical challenges in that. And what does the, how does that change our, um, our relationships to our students? Yes. Um, and then the other is that I'm teaching dance quite a bit in the city, so I'm moving that on to living room dance classes. Uh, so I have a camera and I'm doing it through Zoom and I'm recording them, as you said, Keith. And um, oh, just recently put out an offer to be an artist in residence uh, in, in people's homes so I can help children with language arts and movement and visual arts combined. I think it's really fun right now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Catherine. Um, go to uh, Marnie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Marnie Gladwell, the Executive Director of the Saskatchewan Arts Alliance and associated with Catherine through that as well and that. Um, right now, the Arts Alliance is uh, just developing a survey to send to arts organizations and another survey to send to individual artists to uh, determine the impact of COVID-19 on um, what's happening in our province. And we're doing this so that we can have some data so that when we're doing advocacy at the provincial and also um, the federal level that we will have the, the details so that we can report on the, the way that the, um, the sector has been coping and hurting. Great, thank you, Marnie. Um, Marilyn? I've spoken. Oh, you already spoke, sorry. <laughs> Get everybody, everybody kind of jumps around on the list here. I so just got a code asking me to put my code in. I, I'm in, so I'm gonna ignore that, I guess, eh? Yeah, you're in, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mitchell. Hey, um, um, I, my primary thing is uh, independent artist. I do a lot of dance and, acting and music. 
Um, I also work with Chrysalis Theater on their board um, and a few other things. Um, I guess the main way that this has impacted me personally uh, has been just a lot of contracts have had to get postponed or canceled. So kind of just trying to figure out ways to keep functioning. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, and Sean. Hi, everybody. Um, Sean Bosch with Creative Kids uh, Saskatchewan. I see a lot of familiar faces here, actually. Um, mostly, I'm just here to kind of see a little bit of what everybody's doing, how people are um, adapting to the challenges, and um, just kind of curious about what is a little bit of a, um, a closer look at just what's happening in the province, because we're making some assumptions, so I wanted to hear it from the people who are a little more connected uh, to the, the lessons and the music uh, lessons and the students and the, the, that kind of stuff, basically. Great. Thank you, Sean. And I think I got everybody. Um, uh, Lana Wilson has uh, posted some things on the chat. Uh, Lana, I could try to enable your microphone if you'd like to like to speak. Um, but, oh, yes, let me try that. Yes, go ahead, Lena. You should be unmuted, but we can't hear you. Are you speaking? I guess we can't hear Lena right now. Um, <clears throat> but yes, if anybody else would like to speak, no mic, okay. Um, so anyways, Larry, if you wanted to move on to the second question. Yes, okay, well, thank you. That's, uh, thank you all very much for participating. Um, and these are stories, it's very interesting for those of us who are, who are participating in the, the different sessions across the country. We're hearing some very similar stories, of, uh, you know, a lot of hardship going on, and also some interesting, uh, and you've already started talking about the ways that you're trying to use technology to overcome this particular issue, right, uh, as opposed to, um, well, and then um, in some of your cases, even using it beforehand. So maybe I could just encourage you to uh, talk a little bit more about uh, how you're how you're doing with uh, the use of technology. Are you able to uh, carry on with some of your activities? And so I know some of you have. So it's it's just kind of like a prodding question to make sure we we get everyone in on that. And I wanted also to say that on Thursday there's um. um a webinar featuring the Federal Minister of Culture. Uh, it's being sponsored by um, a Business for the Arts. And I cannot suggest you try to get onto it because we've learned that it's full. Uh, Jennifer, did you put, get yourself, did anyone? Yeah, I'm on it. Okay, I got onto it. As soon as I heard about it, I, I, um, I added my name. And so at least two of us are going to be in there in that meeting. And we have been able to pose questions to the minister. So, um, so we, I, Jennifer, have you done any yet? I have done, I did two questions this morning based okay. on what I've been hearing in these, um, in these uh, uh, round table discussions. Great. So I just, I just thought it would be good for people to know that they're actually, you know, we are able to talk directly, to, at least indirectly to the, uh, the, the federal minister and see what's happening at that level. Some of these questions may be answered. Um, all right, so can I just just encourage other other folks who who've been trying technology to see if we can uh, tease out any other uses or any other you know applications of technology that or or, or non technology other other ways that you've been trying to keep your work going during this difficult time. You can digitally raise your hand in the participants or yes, Catherine. Yeah, hi. Um, I just ordered today from the university a document camera so I can, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you're familiar with those cameras, but they, um, they're, it, they connect with your computer and you can um, have paper and books and you can draw and it will then um, send it um, or people can see it through the, the 
online platform. So it's, uh, it's, they're pretty inexpensive document cameras. And so in this idea of um, changing to classes online and also my interest in working with children in language arts artfully, um, <clears throat> it's a wonderful way to be able to use sort of graphic notation or visuals, uh, spontaneous visuals to explain things. Um, and you can just look at it online. It's, they're just called document cameras. Hmm. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else using anything, even social media, or um, anybody else have um, anything to add? There's been some more in the chat here. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, we've been um, just making an effort to be sure to post new uh, post previous works on our YouTube channel, just to keep our audience engaged. Um, we are uh, we, we do in, we do um, work with a lot of um, musicians, so we do have the copyright for a lot of the music. So that hasn't really been an issue for so far, um, but it, it might be in the future, uh, depending upon. Um, copyright on for because normally we just re record things for archival purposes <laughs> so we haven't really thought about that and so that's becoming some uh, sort of a question now how do we work within the copyright in terms of posting things on YouTube and using utilizing music and things like, it gets quite confusing so learning yeah thank you Keith um, one of the things that's really handy uh, with Zoom when you uh, is using the uh, share screen function. So mm -hmm. when you can, what it what it does is that you can choose particular documents you're working on and just have the screen full of that, and you can move your cursor around and everybody can see it. Or you can do um, what uh, you can just share your desktop, and then your students will move off to the side and and then they can see what you're working on, and and yeah, they can see your cursor moving. You can play a video and use sound in the computer and they can hear that. So I uh, just thought I'd mention that. Um, the, uh, the, other, uh, the, the other thing that I mentioned was with groups, uh, you, can, with un, with un, you, can see, you can actually conduct groups together and uh, it, it works really nicely. The only thing you have trouble, and somebody mentioned that was trumpet solos, you can't actually play with your students because of the lag. I mean, they can play with you, but you just can't hear them playing with you in real time. So you'll notice that they're a little out of time, you know, so, but still you work around that. You have them play along with you. You just realize that, uh, that uh, you, you don't want to listen to them because they're going to be coming in late all the time, but they can actually be playing along with you. <clears throat> That's all. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I mentioned I've seen that some choirs are trying to rehearse by by Zoom. <laughs> I don't know how that works with the leg, but people are trying. Uh, Lana had posted some things on uh, from the Man Art Gallery and talking about social media as well and uh, exploring Team Viewer. That's a new one. I haven't heard of that one, so um, I'm going to look into that one. Um, also, Marnie has posted. Actually, Marnie, if you want to go ahead and talk about what you have there. Oh, you posted. <laughs> oh, uh, just letting people know that we've been compiling resources related to COVID-19 um, and some of the measures that governments put in place. And there's, there's so many surveys that are going on right now and there are a link to a few of them. So that might be helpful for people. The one that strikes me and I, I, I'm unable to tell you exactly who's putting this on I think it is CBC, but it's the thousand dollars for um, doing a production that they that you can put online through them. There's an application process for that. Right. It was a mini grant, um, and it was it called the Empty Stages, or was it that one? Um, I don't know. Caitlin actually posted on the it's right. Canada Performs, and it's National Arts Center. Right. Yeah. 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 And um, <clears throat> we actually also, or Caitlin has also been compiling a list of, um, of, of resources, COVID-19 resources, which is on our website. Um, and uh, maybe Caitlin, do you want to speak a little bit about that? And I'm sure she'll post the link as well. 
Yeah, uh, so I'm posting a link right now in the chat. Um, so this is the resources that I've we've compiled um, for folks in the arts and learning sector. And it includes um, information about financing that's available, emergency financing that's available, and also um, resources that we're finding that are helping people either collaborate online, um, skill sharing websites, uh, that sort of thing. and. Um, a little bit also for some provinces, provincial arts councils that are offering and, and support to their constituents. So yeah, I shared the link. Um, I've been updating it pretty much every single day for the past several days now. So if you have resources, let me know. I'm happy to share them. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll get, take a look at Marnie's as well and see if there's uh, additional one. She's on it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> We also have another, uh, we have another page as well with our just digital activities as well or digital learning options. Um, and we're also um, currently looking at creating a directory of teachers that offer online instruction. And that would be for the general public mostly. But um, so that's in the preliminary stages, but we can roll that out fairly quickly, we have, with uh, Canada's Map of Arts and Learning, we've kind of got the infrastructure in place to, to get that done. Um, yeah, so if, does anybody else have any other uh, uh, thoughts about what they're doing on either social media or digitally currently to kind of sustain your work? Yes, Catherine. I just have two questions. One is what you were talking about posting the digital activities, uh, the age group for that? Um, Caitlin, yeah. Um, they're kind of all over the place, to be honest. Yeah. Um, some of it is like adult, um, oh, like okay. Skillshare type right. uh, programs, and other stuff is more geared towards younger audiences. Um, there's like kids who might be at home looking for stuff to do. It's, okay. um, I'm trying to find three things, basically. Excellent, so. thank you. And the second question I had is just a Zoom question that maybe you can answer is that, Sometimes I've had these Zoom meetings where people are throwing up resources on chat. And because I'm so engaged in the meeting, I'm not uh, downloading them into another place. Does the chat uh, erase once the Zoom meeting is done? Um, well, for us, we'll be forwarding this, uh, we'll be forwarding you a link to this and the chat will be showing up on that. So you'll be able to look at what's happened here. So and, um, if you are recording it, then it does still show up there. Okay, so it archives it. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Great, lots of suggestions happening on the chat right now in terms of choirs and, and everything. Please take a look at, at everything there. And uh, Larry, I don't know if you want to move on to the next question or, oh, Marilyn, please go ahead, thanks. Am I unmuted? Unmuted, yeah. Okay, uh, I teach students who are who don't whose parents don't speak English sometimes and they have very limited data they they don't have it the weak link is always who's receiving because I can set up whatever I want by whatever I want really but if they only can work through their their iPhone then I have to use FaceTime but I just wonder if anybody I'm not going to take your time a lot but I find that's my biggest challenge with individual teaching um, that I found out that iPhones can't use WhatsApp and Zoom is great, but the, the linguistic ability and the amount of data on the home of the person I'm trying to reach to is limited. So if you have any solutions, just feel free. I'll look at Zoom. I'll look at the chat and that's my challenge. That's why I've tried WhatsApp, Zoom, FaceTime, Hangouts, Google Hangouts and WebEx. So yeah, just message me. Thank you. Yeah. Or if anyone has any, um, <clears throat> if you're all interested, if anyone has uh, any thoughts on that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Could I move on, uh, Jennifer? Sure, yeah. Uh, okay, so, well, what we wanted to do also is to tease out, um, it's kind of an overlap, but uh, what are you doing in terms of, are the things that we can do with whatever technologies we have, actually to address this COVID-19 issue. In other words, to help people to cope with being isolated um, or to uh, whatever issues people are facing 
during the COVID-19. Are you directing some of your work? So I, I guess what I'm asking is, what are you doing? You've already been talking about what have you been doing in spite of this problem, but, but now I, I would like to sort of see if you have thoughts about, on account of this, like trying to address this issue through your work. Is, is that, is, has that been going on? Well, I'm just getting started with some of the ideas that I have. I've been in touch with my website person and my, um, I have like a sort of website developer. Um, she's a fellow artist and she's interested in sort of helping us figure out different ways that we can provide online programming. So we have um, funding for a number of different things already, such as our free community dance workshop program. And um, we have uh, the ability to hire teachers to do that online. We just want to make sure we have a consistent platform and we're kind of looking to see if we could do it through our own website in a reliable way first. Um, maybe change some of our, how we're using some of our funds to adapt our websites to make them avail make them able to have live streaming. Um, we're looking at making one of our programs, uh, which is a works in progress contemporary dance series into an online system. It actually kind of lends itself to it, where people can talk about the, the work that they're creating, get a chance to show it, ask some questions of the audience and uh, allow for uh, peer review and audience review. Um, and then also we have a mentor program as part of it. So there could be uh, face to fa uh, FaceTime uh, mentoring sessions and things like that. So we're, we're working on getting all of those types of things running because I really think for, for dance, it's, it could have a longer impact than perhaps other art forms because we do rely so heavily on gathering even just to create the work. That's what where we're, we're at right now. We're all in the idea generating. Um, like I said, we're trying to post stuff on our YouTube just to keep people's spirits up. And it's kind of got my butt in gear to learn how to use video editing and things like that. Great, thanks, Jackie. Uh, Laureen. Yeah, I've seen teachers really step up to the plate. Um, a few things have happened with a lot of our provincial music festivals being canceled. Some of them have chosen still to allow students to perform their piece on, on their festival uh, website. So that's been really exciting for some kids that have worked hard. Just today, the Canadian Federation of Music Teachers launched a special e-festival. We normally do two a year. We decided to throw a third one out and launch it just today for those kids who did have their festival pieces ready to go. And so they will still have the opportunity to have their piece adjudicated uh, by, by an adjudicator and receive that back. We have uh, our Canadian music examining systems have stepped up and they're offering Skype exams and things like that. And I see a lot of networking and I, I see a lot of good things amidst all of, all of the trouble. I think that we can be really proud of what we've done. And I see teachers with ideas rolling constantly. And uh, so that's what we're trying to do is keep our kids engaged for sure. They have time at home. They have parents involved in the Skype lessons. That's never, ever a bad thing for sure. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to capitalize on all of those things for sure. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Keith. Um, yeah, the, with, the, uh, with the outset of the virus, it's actually resulted in some real advantages. One is I have had just, half of my students are adults, by the way, and half of them are students coming to and from school to my studio during the day. It's complicated arrangements. And now, and now that they're at home, it's opened up a whole time schedule. And, and I actually have more people actually interested in doing it because, of course, the kids are home and they're, they're available and they need something to do. Um, after school was always a problem, like with groups and everything, there's only so much time after school for adults or after work. As more and more adults are confined to home now, I'm also, for, they're, they're also flexible. So I have all this, I mean, I really have all as many students as I can handle right now. And it's actually, it could increase. But the other addition, the other issue I wanted to mention was the person who mentioned like a, a family that has only an iPhone. I mean, the, the iPhone app works really well for Zoom, the iPhone Zoom app. But here's the deal. I understand that service providers of, uh, of data are, are uh, providing unlimited data now. So they, sh they shouldn't actually be running out, even if all they have is the data on their phone. Most homes have Wi-Fi. And of course, when they're in the home, they, that's where they are. So they can use that. But if all they have is phone data, I understand that 
service providers have all made it unlimited. So that should be able to go ahead. And Zoom has extended their um, limits for the basic accounts right now. We were using it and they've, we've used it a few times and they have uh, allowed over 40 minutes um, every time they, and then they little pop up saying our gift to you kind of thing. After so I paid my $200, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, money well spent, money well spent. <laughs> Great, and Lena has talked about um, how uh, the Man Art Gallery is promoting art making as mental health, self care, and uh, inviting people to join on weekend sketchbook art journal. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, some good ways to help the community there as well. Yes, Catherine. Yeah, I just in in regards to answering your question, Larry, I think that. Um, there's so much uh, psychological issues that are coming up around this isolation and, and <clears throat> it's like the elephant in the room. We can try to can carry on and move everything online, but I soon found out when I came home to work that it wasn't the same. It wasn't just like work as usual in another site. There's, you're inundated by news and um, by things that come over your email all the time that, you know, you're having to kind of, um, squash a little bit of panic to try to be productive. And so what I found when I was teaching the children that I normally teach in dance, I did a Zoom class last week and at the end of the class they asked, could we sit down and talk? And so, you know, 20 minutes out of the hour of our dance class was them talking about their routine and, and uh, you know, how they feel and if there's fear and, and I, you know, then I started this, um, Kind of wine club called distance no distance where you know i get people together and we have a glass of wine and we're talking about covid all, all the time but that's that's the elephant in the room that people need to do that before they can get down to work they need to talk about their fears and to feel that they're not alone to feel that they're connected so i'm starting to understand that it's one thing to figure out technology and create some sound pedagogy and some dynamic programming. But it's another thing to really attend to this as a, um, a state of emergency. And, and, and what does that imply for these connections? I agree on that. I am part of the uh, larger global Burning Man uh, global network. And it's a, uh, have a lot of artist friends and, and really cool movers and shakers and doers. Um, and they've really rallied together um, to create spaces where people can get together online and talk about the crisis, but also to have fun at the same time. Um, you know, there's friends that have created a, 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 a tri-weekly gathering called the Crash Bar. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's just for people to blow off steam, to say what they want to say. I've taken part in a couple of game shows um where you have to they spin the wheel and they made a wheel and you have to tell them which direction and whether to spin it with their foot or their hand you know and they have different cards that you have to uh you know a ask a question or answer a question or truth or dare or whatever and it, it's just a, a fun way of allowing people to talk about the stresses that they're under right now without uh losing that element of play that we all need mm -hmm. great I want to join that one. <laughs> Anyone else have something to add on that on that topic there? Uh, could I uh, poke in here at this time? Because this is really actually an important point that I wanted to raise at some point, at, at some time. So thank you both for, for contributing that. I'm really interested in how how does this affect so obviously people and you know and the people you're working with, but how is this affecting you? And I think Catherine kind of started it off by saying suppressing panic to do something right to get something done what is this yeah what is the toll emotional toll that this is taking on you this this whole isolation and um and yes i mean i, I for me for example i think it's it's really important and very helpful for me personally to have these sessions every day i get to go and talk to people about uh, you know what's happening and 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 how 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 it's affecting them and it it kind of puts it kind of centers me a bit right like um because I'm you know thinking about 
oh, there's a friend I have to call now because they haven't been called in a couple of days. And I think that's, um, yeah, I'd just like to know how is this, what's the impact on you emotionally? Yes, Marilyn. Okay. Uh, it, it occurred to me that it's my husband's birthday coming up and I was thinking that I could actually use Zoom to invite, invite people, have them all make their own cake, bring their own beverage and be prepared to sing happy birthday and then get him to go online and pop. Everybody's there. So there are some things that perhaps I might be doing like that. Um, just the last speaker there gave me an idea of like, yeah, um, meeting to play a game like, I don't know, uh, what's the game, uh, the five second game or something like that with a few people or something. But it is a concern because I have relatives that actually don't use a computer, they don't have a computer and their phone is a landline and I don't live in that community. So anyway, that's my stressor. People that have special health needs and financial constraints. So that's all I'll say. I'm not shy about talking about my my stressors right now. Um, I've I've been under a lot of stress and not necessarily handling it very well, to be honest. Um, my dad is currently at the Heart Institute in Ottawa. Fortunately, he does not need surgery. I just heard right before this meeting. That's why I'm here. I feel feeling less stressed and better. Uh, but yeah, he's been in, in the hospital for five days now uh, before he even got sent to the the health institute. So like this, like I'm just all over the map in terms of feelings. Um, not being able to have, be able to go to Ontario, which is where they are. And even if I was there, they're not letting visitors in the hospital. So you know, that takes all artistic creativity out of my life right now. Um, so as an artist, uh, I haven't really felt creative or productive because of the stressors um, surrounding family elements, right? So that's, that's something that's going on with me. Also, as an employer, um, I hire many dancers and I, I, I'm just trying to fi figure out ways to to still hire them and pay them because they're still going to have to pay to live and uh so i feel slightly guilty as well like as a person um that i'm not being able to do that for them right now great thank you jackie um amber <laughs> sorry go ahead <laughs> I was like, I think you unmuted me that I muted me and then I, you know, <laughs> you're playing a game. Um, I think um, I, so Esteban is literally a very remote community to begin with. And so you have almost isolation on top of isolation. So um, I live alone. I've been going to work and kind of working alone in an empty gallery and you're always doing this forward focus. Uh, so let's think about programming into maybe summer into fall and you're doing all this forward thinking and the whole time you're like, why, I don't know, is there a purpose to, <laughs> is there a purpose to forward thinking? Is there a purpose to me coming in and doing these grants and then worrying about uh, staff? I mean, like a couple of years ago, we actually had the municipality here actually cut us 20% and, you know, because of the downturn here. So what are we coming into? So it's, for me, it is financial. My family's in Manitoba. I can't go see them. Like, it's like you, I, I do agree with you that I'm interested in doing this today because it helps me feel not so isolated. It helps me because I don't get to talk to people in my field. You know, I, I'm talking to friends. I'm talking to family. I mean, as people in the arts were cheerleaders, I think you're always trying to come up with positive you know, to make people feel better and to make the world better. But, you know, that, sometimes that's really hard when, as so many people have mentioned, you're on that precipice of panic kind of like all the time. And then there's that weird kind of guilt that you're like, should I even be leaving my home? Like there's, there's so much anxieties around everything that you do. Moving forward, staying where you're at. It, yeah, it feels like kind of being rudderless, uh, to be honest. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. 
Thank you. I'm finding just simple things like, you know, I gave up driving like 20 years ago, so I don't have a car. And not having a car right now is pretty awful. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so it's just, sometimes I don't have a cell phone. I'm one of those, right? And I tried to get a cell, I have an old phone that someone gave me and I've tried, been trying to get it hooked up, but you can't get it hooked up unless you go somewhere. And I can't go somewhere because I don't have a car and I don't particularly want to take tr public transit. So I think like, <laughs> you know, as an artist, it never bothered me because I live in my studio and I'm always by a landline and I never needed to have this. I have internet here. I never needed to, you know, so I'm finding new problems that I didn't ever find as a problem before um, that didn't seem like an issue in any way and now are an issue. Right. And also, I don't know, I, I'm a, as a facility owner, I have had to um, cancel a ton of rentals. Um, of course, they're all prepaid and the money's been spent on mortgages. And, you know, so now what do I do with that? So that's also a, a concern to me as a facility, as a venue sort of person. Right. Anyone else have anything to add to that? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. I was just, yeah. just going to say, um, like as a as a primarily as a, like an independent artist, um, just watching contracts um, go away. Um, it's uh, I guess it's kind of been a, a grieving process a little bit, partially just because I think you and I know I personally invest a lot of. Um, yeah, a, a lot in, in these projects, like emotionally and time wise, and like it's a large part of who I, who I am is, is, is like the work that I do and uh, not having it anymore. I think yeah, is, it is, has been a bit of a grieving process. And yeah, just saying goodbye to these things that are important. Yes. Yeah, for instance, Mitchell dances with us and, and we, we have been working for months uh, yeah. creating a collaborative piece that is our first big project with the Saskatoon Symphony and Saskatoon Opera and it's postponed now indefinitely and you know we we were pumped it was going to yeah. be our first big event of our 25th anniversary now we're freaking out trying to like write down the choreography and get them to videotape things at home so we don't lose it and and we, fortunately we, we, we taped some of the in-progress work while in the studio but it was not like it was supposed to be happening March 29th. We, we weren't really thinking that we had to have it memorized for a year later or something. And then to have the disappointment of, of all of the time, energy, work that, they, that the dancers put in and they don't get to do it. It's gotta be super hard on the arts. It's super hard on me as the choreographer, but it's gonna be way harder on the performers because that's their chance to shine. Yeah, and livelihood as well. Yeah, for sure. And Lana mentioned um, uh, about uh, as the director of a gallery, again, trying to whether she should even start booking new exhibitions and whether or not she'll get summer students and and uh, the health of artists, etc. <clears throat> um, yeah, and <laughs> this conversation is, is sort of making me realize that basically everybody in the world is under stress right now. Like, there's nobody who isn't really under stress. The whole world, everybody. And um, wow, so there's going to be some, after this is over, whenever it's over, there are going to be some people who need a lot of help. Um, and I think that's something the arts can do. Maybe that's something we can uh, add an element of positivity that we, we actually can do something. Whenever it's over, <laughs> we could do something to help people to process it. Um, and I, I'll tell a small story, or I shouldn't, I'm, I'm not supposed to be the one talking, but um, uh, I was in wherever I was, um, uh, Bosnia, during, uh, right after they had that terrible, um, you know, Yugoslavia broke up and the horrible horrible war events that happened there. And I saw a group of students who uh, did a play, they did their own, they created their own play um, uh, during the war about what was happening to them in the war. And it was 
surely the most powerful piece of theater I've seen in my life. It was, it was like, it was unbelievably real. And even though they were acting without props and so on, it was just so real. And, um, but, but the, the war was over and, and they had performed it many times. It was a very well known piece in Europe. And uh, so I, afterwards we got to ask them, you know, uh, how they did it and so on. And, and someone said, how do you feel when you perform this play? And they said, when we first started performing the play, we relived it over again. Those rapes, those murders, that was our uncle or aunt or, or uh, ourselves. We were, we were living it through all over again. And they said, now we've done it many, many times. And it's just a play. It's a play that we do for people. So it was very healing for them to create things out of their own experience. And, and that may be something for us to think about going forward. I think we have to find some way of, of, of taking care of our own you know, mental health. And then, and then I think we have the tools to help other people with theirs. I mean, not only is there going to be a baby boom, there's going to be a big boom in Korea. Oh, yes, there is. Right? Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> so, so there's definitely going to be a, I feel the same way. I feel like our, our job as artists is to observe and comment. And it's always been that. I mean, yes, we do entertain and we do lots of other things, but we are the observers and commentators on the state of the world and the state of humanity and the state of things. And we've always been that. Um, sometimes people don't want to hear it. Sometimes they do want to hear it. Sometimes they need to hear it. And sometimes, uh, you know, the, it's, it's, it's healing and sometimes it's cathartic. And I think there's going to be a big, big boom in creativity. And, and I think as artists, we have a bit of a responsibility to do that. To, to bring, to make sure people don't forget things too fast, to make sure that people uh, learn from, from experiences. Uh, we've always been doing this. So what, it's not different now. It's just more intense. Great, thank you, Jackie. Catherine. Sorry, unmuting. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. And I think that we should not think of this as a future that we will be making commentary. And we, but as a now, I'm in the process of building a blog called Convert 20. And, and it's only in response to people sending me all kinds of amazing artful renderings around how, how they're responding now to this situation through poetry, through knitting, through, <laughs> through paintings, through language play. And, and I, I think that it's really important that we make containers for that right now so that people feel that they can immediately respond and, and, and it will be healing also now opposed to waiting for the recovery of this situation. Great, and uh, um, Marilyn is asking um, more about if anyone has uh, suggestions for simultaneous sounds like band, choir, piano. Uh, I don't know, Marilyn, if you want to talk a little bit more about that, or oh, I am there. I'm unmuted. I guess the big thing is to collaborate. We have to hear each other, even in a small group, and then we need to find a platform like YouTube or something where people actually click on it and we have advertising, we can make money by this. But the big thing is we do have to have a good sound and if we want to combine dance or we're going to combine musicians, I'm wondering if anybody out there has found anything and I gather it's not, not yet, that'll be coming and I'm looking on my email because the registered Canadian musicians are having a gathering. There's, there's a few platforms coming up. I'll share it if I find it, but yeah. I'm, I'm here for that reason, just to see if we can get some people singing together, even in groups of six to 12, uh, whether we can get our pianists hearing uh, two trumpet players playing together simultaneously, that would really help because a dancer and a musician then can work together. So any ideas there? Thank you. I saw that the Toronto Symphony Orchestra recently did something like that where all the all the, the musicians were remote and they got together and they played something on, on Instagram. I don't know how they did it though, uh, if it was via Instagram or what it was exactly, but. Uh, yeah, that's precisely what I'm looking for. I saw a group that could not 
perform their giant mass choir thing and it showed last night on global or something all of their pictures like this and they all sang so i know there's a record button on um, zoom so i'm wondering if they all got together like like say we did here we could try it and saying happy birthday and we, we could do it right now and the host could record it and see hey can we get a, a, what kind of sound can we get and who can we share it with that's what i was hoping with from something really hands-on kind of like from this i do appreciate meeting everybody but that would help us all thank you why don't we do that for your husband right now yes let's let's do it uh, i guess i'd invite the host to hit um uh, hit record <laughs> Yeah, this, this is this, a real cast. Do you want yeah, me, it is you want me to start, recording. you guys? Are you, you really, who's going to take on the uh, the pitch? Or should we just start out with any pitch? Count us in. Okay. Da, 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 da. Oh, turn your mics on. Turn your mics what, on, everybody. What's the What's the name? Happy birthday to you. Oh, Les. To who? Les. Sir, Les. <laughs> okay. Les. Okay. Here we go. Happy birthday to Les. Okay. Here we go. Da 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 bum ba da 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 Happy birthday to you 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 I think we were just missing the tempo We both appreciate that We needed a metronome Yeah That's the metronome What speed I'm in I think the metro would have been out of phase because if you couldn't sing with me with my intro and you're all musical, I'm assuming somewhat musical. <laughs> I don't think it was a metronome would help unless there's an inner metronome on the Zoom app. That would help. Yeah. There's a solution for our dancers, though. If you can get some a couple of people working together like that, that's your solution. Then a platform like YouTube, someplace where people can click on with support. Anyway, I'll be quiet. Thank you. Well, I, I'll reach out to the, I know someone at the Symphony, Toronto Symphony, I'll ask her how they did it. And uh, if I find out, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> and I wanted to say also, I know you're looking for a solution right now, but um, we are going to, I mean, um, uh, Nisa is going to be making a report of all the ideas that come out. So I realize that that's not now, that's going to be in a couple of weeks or three weeks or whatever, whenever Nisa can finish writing. But um, uh, but and also these will be available for you to watch all of them. So so you but we, we hope that we will be sh indeed sharing some ideas, but um, But right now you've got this particular group. So whatever ideas this group has uh, th That's your immediate input. I guess um, I could I uh, could I move on to our final uh, point of, that is interesting to us, which is um, Can you imagine some ways in which this organization our organization now RCAA uh, can what else would you like to see us do? Uh, consider we have limited resources as well, but we we um, we are trying to uh, work digitally, and we are also trying to do um, advocacy. We do plan to write to the you know prime minister and uh, and other uh, political folks to make sure they know what's going on here um, with with our sector. And for sure, I have put we have I think both put in questions for the minister. So we are going to get to talk, you know, not, not the provincial minister, but the federal minister of culture. So maybe we can find out, um, or at least do some, do some lobbying, make sure that, make sure that we're not forgotten. But are, are there things you'd like to see us do that you think would help? Laureen. Yeah, this is something uh, that's talked about certainly with the Federation of Music Teachers is, you know, we're, we're kind of like herding cats. I mean, we're all independent. We kind of all fall under this umbrella. There is real, real concern because we don't fit in any of these slots and not that the government's not spending money. They certainly are. Um, but but th that's that's probably our biggest thing is advocacy, making sure that that there's some place for us to fit. If, if there's financial support available, basically don't forget about us. I, I think that's probably it. And uh, I mean, right now there's this cacophony and, and everybody's rallying and banging at the door saying, me, 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 and, and whatnot. And those, everybody's scared and everybody's financial concerns are real. So are ours, I guess that's the big thing. And, and how, do we, how, do we harness, how do we harness our energy and, and bring all the arts organizations together 
to lobby and I'm and I'm really glad that you guys are, are stepping up and that you have some inroads and maybe you could you know I mean we could speak after or something on behalf of, I can speak on behalf of our organization see if we can't have a more jointed more forward type of momentum to keep us moving and uh, make sure that we have as big a voice as as possible in this time great thank you Anyone else have any thoughts on how the network can can help out during this time and, and also moving forward in the new reality, whatever that happens to be? One of the things that I really value as an artist, especially when I'm going through a period of um, say, fi say financial difficulty or just trouble finding gigs or whatever is I it's very helpful when I get um, just I would say the, it's the personal touches so it's the letters from friends saying you know what you're a fabulous artist we love what you do you're gonna make it through this or um, uh, people who somebody who just writes and says hey loved your video or um, uh, you know, like it's the small personal touches, I think, that artists really value. And we often um, dismiss those when we're in um, big, crazy situations like this, but they're really going to be important in the future. So individual touches, that's something that I think that organizations don't forget. Please don't forget those. They, they're invaluable to people as human beings and um, they keep us inspired to keep working on, on our art. Great, thank you. <clears throat> and we invite you to connect with us, uh, either sending an email or connecting with us on social media and just continuing the conversation and letting us know how we can help or how we can spread the word. We're trying to, as I said, uh, let people know about uh, people who are teaching online uh, or even artistic, um, experiences that are happening online. And if you're asking for, uh, if you're selling tickets to that or however it can uh, help, you know, we have a very wide network. Um, so we're trying our best to kind of uh, spread the word as much as possible throughout this time. But, uh, but of course, if uh, people have uh, other ideas of how we can help, please do let us know. And um, we are gonna be sending a follow-up email uh, to this event and um seeing if we we don't know how long this is going to go on but we may continue to do more of these in the future after this series is done and um we will be sending a kind of a follow-up survey and and if anything does uh come out of out of the uh out of our efforts at all please do let us know if something has helped you at all because course we have to apply for funding as well so any kind of stories that we can share with potential funders help us as well help us do more of this type of thing um, but yeah also I wanted to say that if if something concrete emerges for example from that minister's uh, conversation or from or from anything else we will be sure to, we will share it. I mean we've got we've got you on our um, uh, you know in our in our sites and so um, we'll be sure to, to let you know what what we learn Mm -hmm. So I guess that's that's it. I, I wish you all <laughs> health and and uh, good mental health as well as physical health. And uh, and thank you so much for joining this. Uh, it I think it it, it 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 makes me feel good to be able to to talk to you and to do this. I think it's it's every positive thing we can do at this time. It's it's hard to get your, wrap your head around what is going. I mean how huge it is but but um every every little bit helps i think and so thank you very much for making this possible thank you thank you thank you thank you everyone bye-bye yeah thanks bye, -bye.